Hi, this is Natalie Taylor. We are filming for Community ITV and I am here with the wonderful, talented Amari Banks. Doing? Good to meet you. Great to be here in London. Great to be in the UK. Yes. Great to be with you, Natalie. Yes, and you too. So you're here promoting your new album. Mm -hmm. Tell us about this new album now. Well, yeah, I'm here over here in the UK promoting my Move On Deluxe Edition album. Yeah. Um, Move On, the title track of the album, is not just the title track because it's the title track. It's the title track because there's a story behind it. Yeah. And the story behind it is that um, I retired from cricket four years ago. Yes. Um, majority of the people who knows from my events would have known me from my days as a cricketer. Tino Best, or left field up with Banks on, maybe they can just uh, get things back under control. Um, but I've been playing cricket professionally from the age of 18 years old, um, represented the West Indies team at the age of 20. Um, started to play cricket um, for leisure and fun with my schoolmates at the age of 8, 9 years old. But I'll take the story back even before that. <laughs> um, I was involved in music, being my dad was a musician <clears throat> and yes. an artist from the age of before I could remember myself, from the time yeah. I knew myself, I always was involved in music, doing talent shows, yeah. playing the guitar, playing the drums, playing the piano, um, just being part of something which brought me so much joy and brought my family yeah. together. Um, so I've been around music my entire life. Um, cricket was something which I did um, when I got to uh, the, the, the childhood age of like eight, nine years old, as I said, because my, my friends playing it. You know, as a kid, you yeah. love to play sport. Was your uncle a cricket player as well? My uncle's name is um, Mr. Val Valentine Banks. Who's, yeah. um, he was a past captain of Anguilla cricket team oh. as well. He was involved in administration in the region as well. So yeah. cricket was something where, I mean, my dad spent a lot of time on the road. Yeah. And um, I spent quite a bit of time with my uncle. As well as a lot of the McLuhan cricket influence came from my, my coach, who actually played cricket over here in the UK for Hampshire oh, wow. for 16 years. Yeah. Uh, he's actually got a gym in Hampshire named mm -hmm. after him. His name is Mr. Cardigan Kanda, so yeah. big shout out and respect to him. Mm -hmm. um, so my whole life has been infused between sports and music. music. So yeah. that's a kind of a nutshell package, you know, yeah. putting it together of who Omari Banks is. So you, you retired from cricket four years ago, mm. so this moving on, it's, it's still happening, you're still moving on, so what is the plan for the future? Um, the plan is to take the music as far as it can go and yeah. push it to the four corners of the world. I say that and I actually mean it, not just cliche. Yeah. Um, I'm somebody who's passionate about whatever I do. Yeah. Um, I was the same with my, with my, my cricket. And I'm the same now with my music. I mm. work hard. Um, I've surrounded myself with, with people who share the same vision for the product that I, that mm. I have. Um, I work with my brother, my manager, Warren Blois, okay. um, and a number of people that surround me that work along with the team. Of people yeah. over here, um, we're working with Ray Paul. So um, it's a really good thing to, to surround yourself with people that are. Uh, that have your best interests at heart. Yeah, it can inspire you can and inspire motivate you. you to do other things. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I mean, so the plan is really to get the music out there. We're marketing it since the album Move On, Deluxe yeah. Edition Move On, throughout Europe, the UK, the US, the Caribbean. So it's really, really to push the music and, it's and a nice those song. Set it's, it's really inspirational and I think it, um, it will inspire people in the same situation as you. Probably they were doing something because you was good at what you was doing in sport. Mm -hmm. But then your passion was the music. Yeah, I mean, I'll put it this way. It's a big step to move on like that. Yeah, it is a big step. I mean, I love cricket when I was doing it as well. Mm. Um, I love music. And um, both of them actually kind of complemented each other. Yes. In the sense that when I played sport, I used music as something to relax me and to, to inspire me as well. Mm. And mm. now that I've um, gone full on into to the music, sport is something which I can draw now on the and the lessons, the principles to try to yes. inspire me to do better and work yeah. hard and to be disciplined. Definitely. Um, so they've worked together, um, I think, for the greater good. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to, to really come out over to the UK and um, meet people that you've, 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 you've done something completely different <laughs> in the past. And then they come to your show and they yeah. come and meet up in a different environment. Yeah. So it's all just good vibes too to meet people, old friends, and, yeah. and um, communicate on that level. 
I think um, with your music as well, due to your father being Banksy Banks, you probably grew up around a lot of artists as well, so it was inevitable really that you would probably pick up you, you know, instruments and learn how to play them. How many instruments do you play at the moment? Well, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, I've been exposed to so much um, music from a very early age. I've seen musicians come inside and outside mm -hmm. the house. Um, I've seen reggae royalty, mm -hmm. whether it be Kako, Benji Myers, um, I've been able to meet Freddie McGregor, Bougie Banton, Jack York, Kranix, Romain Virgo, Marcia Griffiths. Oh, All these people you... have been able to not only meet, but they perform at my dad's music festival. Yes. Which, which is, festival is that? It's called Moon Splash. It's oh. actually the longest privately owned music festival in the Caribbean. Oh. Um, so big shout out to my dad for that. I've seen mm -hmm. him work. Where is it? It's in Anguilla. Okay. It's in Anguilla, um, where I'm from, from mm -hmm. Anguilla. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I've really um, been blessed to have around me um, a number of um, artists and uh, musicians and people within the industry. I've been able to meet and, and help, help to give a bit of guidance and yes. direction and, yeah. and path. Because um, music can be a tough industry, like anything mm. else. Sport mm. was a tough industry as well. Yeah. Whatever you go into, business it can be tough. Mm. Um, but it's it's always great to have people around you who who share, as I say, the same vision and they can kind of direct you in the direction that you need to go. Yeah, I see you've got a collaboration with Peter Morgan. But I I don't have the front to try to confuse, and me not happy from white paper. No. I make the move. I'll tell you what, Peter Morgan is, is somebody I've always admired in, in music, so big shout out to Peter Morgan and the entire uh, Morgan Heritage group. Um, I did a show um, last year, I think it was from September, don't quote me exactly, but something <laughs> September, October. <laughs> Um, and Mark and Heritage um, and, uh, and a couple other really ex high octane alkaline myself. Or I was on the bill in St. Martin, which is a neighboring island to England. Yeah. And um, when I did the show, we did some promo before the show, and I knew Grams Morgan from before because he had already mm. performed at my dad's music festival a couple oh, of years okay. before. Yeah. So I knew him re actually fairly well, we communicated on the phone, etc. And his son, Jamiri Morgan, um, went over to St. Martin to do the show. Um, at, at the radio stations, I got I, I met their management, um, one of their road managers, a gentleman by the name of Warren Blois, mm. who right now works with me in terms of management. So oh. we worked together and um, we thought it would have been a good idea that we would communicate and that um, that we would work something together between myself and, and Peter Mark. And, yeah. and Peter Mark, Peter was, was happy to do it. Um, he, he had heard my music before and he was a, f a fan or somebody who, who liked my music. And we just got straight to business. We thought it would be a good thing for us to do that collaboration. Fantastic. The old legend, the crooner. Um, yeah, all together. Yeah, so we actually yeah. interviewed him, I think it was the year before last, 2014. We interviewed him and they and Gramps. They were all talking about going into their own kind of separate thing, but yes. they all st they're still Morgan Heritage, but all kind of doing their own right. different kind of things, really, with exactly. the music. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the Morgan Heritage crew, they're, they're a, a band and a family that's, that holds dear to my heart because yeah. um, they're, they're a lovely group of guys and they stay true to who they are. And they're also about conscious music. Yes. Uh, I think Gramps have a movement that's called Cool to be Conscious Music. Yes. And um, that's a great thing because, I mean, mm. in this age where you have so much music out there, which is it's, it's cool and it's good <clears throat> from every, to each his own. Mm. But, um, but I think. Um, Graham's, his movement is, is great, um, yeah. to promoting conscious reggae music. It's great. I think it's good as well because it's good to promote good music that's influencing people and inspiring people with exactly. love. Exactly. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a really important thing to send a message out when you're... Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm, and I'm all about that. Music it's, um, I consider my music music with a message. Yeah. Uh, and the message is love and the message is... Um, one of togetherness. Yes. Um, I, I wrote a song that's called Jehovah Message. Um, Jehovah means yeah. another name for, for God or whatever you prefer to call God, but the message yeah. is love. Um, to not to judge somebody by just how they look or just, yeah. um, or just by the outward appearance, but it's more about um, how they treat you and about the principles that they stand for. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So 
What advice would you give to people coming up in the industry? Um, ultimately, for, for me, I can give you the advice that I try to take on board um, as an artist. Um, it's always good to take advice from others, but ultimately, you have to know who you are and, yeah. and work within that. Um, I've always been a, a strong, confident person of who I am, mm -hmm. and um, ultimately, that's what I want to do. I want to share my message. Yeah. Um, um, I'm not the kind of person to let whether it be the, the, just the industry or just what is popular or common mm. to dictate to me what, what I should do. Going back to your album, what do we have to expect from this album? Because from what I can hear, it's very inspirational. It's about love, relationships. Um, yeah. Well, you summed it up. <laughs> <Is that it? laughs> it's about love, relationships. It's about yeah. social awareness. It's about consciousness. And um, it's about fun as well. Yeah. <clears throat> but good, good, nice, clean fun. And um, I like to say that in my music that, that everybody can listen to it. Um, there's, there's, um, I like to write with a certain level of content, a, a huge amount of content behind the sound, that's everybody yes. does. Um, and I try to do that. Um, so you can expect good music, um, yeah. you can expect um, musicianship. Um, all the albums, was, the whole album was produced in um, between Jamaica and Houston, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with some of the biggest names in reggae music. I see Robbie Lynn, Sly Dunbar, Cat Core, ben, um, Junior Jazz, Corey Stoot, um, Dean Fraser, um, Glenn Brown, Mikey Fletcher, some of the biggest names in reggae music. Yeah. Um, so you can expect a certain level of um, production, a certain level of um, professionalism to go along with the project. Yeah. And I'm happy and proud to work along with, with, with people such as these, not to forget my dad, Mr. Banky Banks. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I'm really happy and looking forward to, to sharing that with the entire world. Man. The album is yeah. out right now. It's on iTunes, it's a move on deluxe edition album. Fantastic. And um, yeah, so I'm really just looking forward to sharing that. Excellent. And how can people find out more information about you? How can they get on social networking sites? I'm very easy to get in contact with. Um, if you remember my name, which is Omari Banks, um, you can get in contact with me I'm on Twitter. It's Omari Banks 11. Yeah. On Instagram, it's Omari Banks 11. On Facebook, you search me. It's like my band and fan page. It's Omari Banks. Oh. And my webpage is mm -hmm. www.omaribanks.com. Excellent. You yeah. heard that, so you know where to find Omari Banks. Oh, Omari, can you play something for us? Definitely. I'm going to play for you actually. The title track of my album is a song that's called Move On. Excellent. That'd be great. <laughs>
Find peace in knowing you gave it your best Be true to yourself, have no regrets But turn it back on what you could have done Just move on, but learn each every end It's something to talk, my friend, you are a godson Just move on, learn your champion What faith the battles won What faith the battles won What faith the battles won Yeah, I think it's been fantastic catching up with you and I look forward to hearing more from you in the future well, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Natalie. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Okay.